ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is our second public hearing on uh, the proposed budget for FY 2016. Um, Ms. Black, it's all your show. Most of it anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll just go over the presentation as we did um, two weeks ago. Um, just as a reminder, I know it's hard to see, but this is your organizational chart. Um, you are responsible for funding all of the agencies that you see on this chart, but only the ones that are in the center um, are the ones that fall directly under the direction of the Board of Commissioners. Um, just to review quickly of the millage history, um, the amount that you see in green with the number on it is the amount that actually comes to the county. Um, and as you can see, that was um, that amount was going down. Um, last year, you did have a one mil increase in that. Um, and then what you see above that in the orange and the gold is the amounts that go to the Parks and Recreation Authority and the Industrial Authority. A review of the um, budget as presented two weeks ago. Um, comparison by fund. General fund 2015 was $51 eleven thousand one hundred eighty one dollars that goes to fifty one million four fifty eight five thirty eight or point eighty eight percent increase you have your special revenue funds your commissary seven hundred thousand up twenty two point nine three percent there were some shift and some cost there your drug seizures remains the same your law library remains the same the accommodation excise tax shows an increase of twenty eight point eight percent to 513 460 that's in anticipation of the increase in the hotel motel rate um, your intergovernmental grants 1.09 percent your jail operations shows a decrease of 9.46 percent to 370,500 again that was some of those shifted costs your drug abuse treatment, $170,000. It shows a 6.25% increase. You actually um, funded that last year, but it was funded through your contingency. And your emergency communications is up 2.34% to $3,288,436. Um, your victim witness fund. Um, shows a decline of 16.37%. Um, that's primarily due to fine revenues. Um, $188,750 and your special services fund shows an increase of 2.56% to $3,590,178. Under your capital project funds, you'll see that um, most of those are decreasing. Those are um, your previous SPLOST, which those projects are paying out, and also the um, construction fund for the jail and the judicial administrative complex and those funds going away. Um, your supply seven remains the same at 21 million. Under your enterprise funds, water sewer shows a 6.46% increase to 4,739,667. Your landfill shows a 16.99% increase. That is due to the increased funds that um, for the KLVB. And your street lighting shows a 2.03% um, increase. Under your internal service funds, the equipment fund, that shows a 495% increase to $2.9 million. Um, but if you look below that, your fleet manager is zero. Um, those funds were combined in 2016. Your health insurance is virtually flat at 0.89% and there's no change in the workers comp. Overall, your budget goes from 112,785,361 to 100,502,054, or down 10.89%. If you look at your general fund um, under your revenues, taxes are virtually flat, 0.90%. No change in your licenses and permits. Your intergovernmental shows a decrease of 35.58%. That was primarily the DOT mowing contract. Charges for service is up 8.65%. Your fines and forfeitures down 15.14%. And then your miscellaneous items 1.69%. Your total revenues 50,373,538 or 0.56%. On the expenditure side, general government is up 2.7%, judicial 
Public safety, virtually flat, 0.29% decrease. Public works, 1.71% decrease. Health and welfare, 7.77% decrease. Culture and recreation, 0.84% decrease, and no change in the housing and development. Total expenditures are 50 million, 552,497, or up 7.7%. Once you put in the transfers um, in and out, you have a balanced budget. <coughs> Just some of the highlights. Again, um, property tax revenues are virtually flat. There is a small merit increase, but no cost of living, some additions for insurance. Um, no additional positions. There's a limited number of vehicles, computers, um, but we have continued the current level of services. Uh, if you break down your general fund revenues, you'll see that 87.17% um, is taxes. That is not all property taxes. If you take that 87.17% and break it down, 71.49% of that is from property taxes and 27.3% is your local option sales tax, which is a reduction on that property tax burden. On the expenditure side, 23.45% um, of your expenditures go towards general government, 10.76% for judicial, 37.92% for public safety, and 9.53% for public works. If you were to break down where your money goes per dollar, um, you have a comparison here for 2014, 15, and 16, and you'll see that most of those have not changed in the last three years. Okay, thank you, Ms. Black. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Okay. Mr. Chairman. Um, since our last meeting on the budget <clears throat> I have been asked by several of the commissioners to uh, bring for you certain re additional requests that have been uh, received and or discussed one uh, we have discussed on a couple of occasions uh, is the purchase of the copper software program from the Valdosta Police Department and the Regional Commission for, that would be used by the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the next item is uh, the authorization of a part-time ankle monitoring officer that would begin in January 2016. Um, and the uh, approval of a mobile assessor application. This was presented to you during uh, your budget hearings this is a four-year program. The initial year is $22,000. The cost of all of these um, three items is uh, $195,500, which um, if the board is in favor of these items, we would reduce the current general fund contingency by this amount, the, the uh, I would request that the board authorize the uh, transfer of these monies and into the appropriate line items designated by both the manager and the finance director. In addition to the uh, current general fund request we have also had uh, two requests concerning funds that would be specifically um, addressing special services one is the funding to the regional commission for the uh, metropolitan planning organization for a transit study to be split equally between the city of Valdosta and Lowndes County as well as a truck route study and during the budget hearing you re uh, received a request from the airport authority and w for additional funding for related to 
police protection provided by the Valdosta Police Department and fire protection provided by the Valdosta Fire Department. Uh, those two items were not initially included. The inclusion of the airport request as well as the regional commission request would uh, total an amount of $118,092. That would, um, we would re request that you, if you are in agreement, to also authorize the reduction in the special fund contingency, which is currently 300000 by the $118,092. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Um, commissioners, at this time, I'd like, again, uh, Mr. Pritchard has gone through the list that you that we have discussed and that you have been, uh, before you. Um, I would like to take the time, and I believe we have the time where we're at right now, to go through each one of these. And if there's any discussion or any concerns, certainly I'd like to hear them now. Um, so that we can move through and make a decision of whether these items are going to be included or whether it's a partial list to be included. Uh, we do have Sheriff Prine. I see he's in the back of the room back there. If you have any questions in regards to the Coppers program, um, I'm sure he'd be able to answer those for you. Um, Sheriff, I've got, if you don't, can you come forward, please? The, the the only questions I actually have, are the, and, and, and I'm going to use the term concern, but I just want to make sure that the direction that the Sheriff's Department is wanting to move into is to move into this program and the support with the Valdosta Police Department and the Regional Commission. That is This correct. is the software yes. that you'll be using. You're making a commitment that this is where you're going to be at as the future Yes, sir. Moves forward. That is correct. Yeah. Well, we have Sheriff Prine here. Do we have any other questions in regard to this item? No, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. Thank you. Okay, on the authorization of the part-time ankle monitoring office, officer beginning the funding of this of January 2016, uh, that budgeted item, as you know, is $23,500. Uh, there has been uh, a good bit of discussion about the need for a part-time person. Um, to uh, assist the, the one person that is uh, operating this program at this time. Is there any questions in regards to this ex requested expenditure or any comments that any of the commissioners would like to make? Go ahead. My, my question is, can somebody clarify for me again the number of, of uh, offenders that are currently on this program? Does anybody here know that? I didn't mean to. 30-something, maybe? No. It's close to 100. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and the number of fairy is all dependent. So huh? well, we could assume that those 100 people would be in jail today had it not been for the ankle monitoring program, and we would be paying the uh, the daily rate on Sheriff Prime to house those individuals and also the medical costs and so forth, correct? Yes. Correct. I mean, okay. Maybe I'm stating the obvious. I just... Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on now to a, for the uh, request for the mobile assessor's application. As you know, the request that would be affecting this budget year is $22,000. Do we have any questions in regards to that item? Um, to give you, as you may know, information that you have, this is basically um, a tool from the assessor standpoint that would allow the uh, the assessors in the field to do the real-time data they'd be able to enter uh, enter this information electronically rather than doing it uh, on paper form at this time they'll be able to um, that information then will be able to be forwarded back uh, to the assessor's office where the processes can be can be um, can be handled quicker uh, they they uh, when I say they I, I did speak with the uh, Mr. Mike Hill with the tax assessor's office and his feelings is is that certainly uh, he feels like that in the first year of implementation the overall savings from efficiency in his office 
uh, you would be able to pay for the the, the total cost of the uh, software pack software program in the first year in the first year any questions regarding that is that going to require a reduction of manpower in his office or, uh, or lead to that it could possibly lead to that there again there's nothing that says specifically that that's what would happen that it would be that the efficiency could come in the reduction of of uh, workforce um, however the um, it, it has been mentioned and the key there is is that uh, again they would be able to be more efficient and in the time that they have they should be able to be to look at more pieces of property and and have more assessed throughout their their year of assessing just making them a little more efficient okay. <clears throat> any other questions Again, that total there is 195,500, and as Mr. Pritchard said, that would come out of your current general fund contingency. Is how, if those requests were approved, and that's how that would be funded. Um, we'll move on to the next item. Of course, is the additional funding request for the MPO for the transit study. That total is 62, $6,252 dollars. A truck route study for $8,845. Uh, the total is $15,097. And of course, that is the, that is Lowndes County's portion of the study. I know that there has been a good bit of discussion uh, in regards to this. Uh, but again, I would like to air that out. And if anyone has any issues or concerns, now would be the time to do it. Mr. Chairman, my biggest concern is for us to transport the transit study. I mean, recently they had done a transportation study, and that's been less than five years. And I'm sure that they can go in peace from what they have now to look at it. The demographics have not changed that much as far as the transit study. I don't have a problem with the truck route study, but I do have a problem with the transit study. Okay. Mr. Any Chairman, I... Um, <clears throat> I realize we not too long had a transportation study, but this is, uh, to my understanding, supposed to be uh, the study on the public transportation itself uh, in the city of Adosta as well as the surrounding area to, to, to help our entire area. Um, and I personally don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. Any other questions? What's the total cost of the, of the study? Does anybody have that total figure? Jason. The transit study, I don't believe was as expensive as the truck study. But I, I think total cost, you're looking at a potential share of 80% of the total coming from the federal government. In some cases, it's a 10% match locally. And in some cases, it's a 20% match locally. So these, these funds, the, the additional funds are coming from the federal government? Yes, sir. The large majority, I think in both cases, 80% come from the federal government. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Time frame. What time frame if... If we say the truck route, how long would it take to have a truck route around by Lost? The uh, mm. comment from the um, MPO was that they would initially hire a consultant to study that. Mike, do you have any time limit or time frame that they mentioned in the technical committee? I think they're looking at trying to have the uh, the the truck study done by the end of the year uh, to where they could maybe present something to DOT but if uh, but once a truck study is determined you've got to the DOT has got to approve it it's got to be bought off on by uh, DOT uh, if you've got federal highway folks in it then federal highway has got to uh, to agree with it and uh, from there when everybody gets on board with it from the day that you you know, the day they deem it a project, you're, you know, 10 plus years before you'll ever break ground. 
From the, Mr. Chairman, from the results of the last study, I'm assuming that we had the study um, for both the transit and the truck route in 2009. Is that correct? Just no, the transit just, study just in 2009. Just the transit study. Does, Mike, are you familiar with that? Are you familiar with the transit study? I guess what I'm, my, my, my ultimate question is, was there a result of that study? I mean, what, was there, was there an, an end to that that said, here's, here's, that, what, here's our yes, findings? Yes, there, there was a, they actually had a operational budget. They had routes. Everything was determined. Uh, and roughly, I believe the count, you know, the city and the county would both have had to come up with over a million dollars budgeted a year just to operation to, to operate it and supplement the funding uh, so uh, and so I, I think that uh, you know I, I know that that's why in 2009 this thing has you know, kind of been suppressed since 2009 is because of the the million dollars that both the city and the county collectively would have to come up with to fund this Mr. Fletcher, let, let me ask a question, kind of just for clarification, and you may or may not know the answer to it, but but I need to I need to ask the question. In the study that was done in 2009, was that that study uh, specific in the description of the transit program that was asked for, or were they multiple options looked at for the transit study? I think there were there were multiple options looked at, but the the best one that they come up with was uh, I think it was Jason. You maybe correct me. But I think it was like a seven bus uh, route, uh, seven bus route uh, that they had come up with, and you know, you'd you'd have to of course you'd have to buy all the equipment yeah. new. You'd had to bought uh, you had to build maintenance facilities. All these things you'd had to build bus stops and terminal. So, um, so that's the uh, yeah. That was that was a lot of the a lot of the cost. Okay, so so it was your feelings that we did look at different options rather than one specific model. They they looked at they looked at options with uh, you know combining things with uh, Valosta State. Uh, I think they I think. They may have even looked at doing some things with MIDS, but uh, but I, I don't know for sure if MIDS was part of it. But I do know that they they had looked at Valosta State as part of that. Okay. Um, yes, we during that time a very general option list was considered, but the final study was for a turnkey operation for a completely new transit system to build out and let the county or the city or the MPO operate brand new buses, et cetera. So the final product was a, a focused option on the completely new system. They didn't really delve into the details of the MIDS and the potential partnership with VSU, other type options. They mentioned them, but they really focused on what would it take for us to operate our own system. So the final product was a focused, very built out, one specific option product. The other ones were mentioned, but not really built out like that full-fledged transit study that was the final product. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I guess yes. my, my thoughts at the end of the day is, you know, um, you know, I don't really want to keep kicking a can down the, down the road. At, I mean, if not pursuing a public transportation uh, up-to-date study now, then when? one and then two we've spent more than 15,000 on a lot less important things that's my thoughts okay let's move on because we're getting real short on our time uh, real quick the airport authority also has had a request in regards to uh, their request that we're showing here is of $102,934 uh, of course there's one specific portion of this, I believe this is for fire protection is part of that request and the other is for Valosta City Police uh, officers are now providing security uh, that is required by the federal TSA. Uh, they are required to be at the airport with arresting powers two hours prior to any flights. Um, 
as typical. This was something that the federal government said we will pay for, and now that you've got it up, you've got it in place, and they require it, but now they are removing the funding for that. So now the airport authority is turning to local government to fund uh, this service and continuing, continuing to fund that. Um, I don't have the exact figure, again, right in front of me, but I do believe the portion of the, of the, um, the security side for, for Lowndes County is somewhere in the $86,000, $89,000 range in order to provide that service. Again, this is a request that's from the airport authority, um, and it is, uh, it is before you for your consideration. Do we have any questions in regards to that request? I just, Mr. Chairman, I just wish that we had a little more details on this. Um, you know, I have a little bit of trouble. Although, let me say, I don't, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize our, our airport and, and the good work that they do out there and keeping the passenger safety and all that. I understand that. I just wish that we had a little more details as it relates to to what's being spent now, as far as the staff that's currently there. Um, and I would just take the position that if we could if we could somehow obtain that information before ultimately approving this i would feel a little more comfortable huh? mr Pritchard, let me i'd like to ask if if this was to move forward is this an item that could be funded again for half a year until we get the information back that was that's required so that we actually know for sure and have documentation as far as what the actual cost is to provide the required service, whether it's provided by the Valdosta Police Department or whether it's provided by private security. Is this, can we do that? You can. Does that help you would give us, that would give you the time in the next six months to get the, get your information pulled together and then we would reconsider it again um, as a, as if we move forward with it at that point, then as an amendment to the budget. I think we should go that route. Any questions on that? Um, <clears throat> the service provider out there is the Valdosta City Department, Police Department, correct? Valdosta Police Department. Can our Sheriff Department participate in that, or what's the policy there? Well, I think that that request would have to come from the Airport Authority. I have raised that question myself with the Airport Authority. I'm not sure whether there's any ongoing conversations or discussions with the Sheriff's Department in regards to that issue. Um, but, I, but I think, again, that six-month period gives you the time to look at those different options that we have, and then we can reconsider participation in January. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. At this time, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak and add to Please come forward. Why did I have any doubt? <laughs> State your name and address for the record, please. My name's Gretchen Quarterman. I live at 6565 Quarterman Road. I wasn't going to say anything, but oh, Lordy, please spend the $6,500 to do the, tr the transit study. Um, communities that have public transit are more viable. People can easily get to work and home. It's one of the most important things to help our community grow. Please spend the money. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience would like to come forward and make a statement? Okay. Hearing none. Any other information from staff? Yes, sir. Okay. This concludes the hearing of the 2015 budget.